morning, everybody. Um, I'll be reading from John chapter 1, 35 to 51, New King James Version. John 1, 35 to 51. I'll just, I'm going to be talking, the title is, as you can see, The First Disciples. So I like looking at words and seeing what they all mean. So I actually did. And according to strong concordance, the Greek word maatas, the disciple is a learner. One who follows both the teaching and the teacher. That is a follower of Christ who learns the doctrines of scripture and the lifestyle that is required which creates a transformed life. Are there any disciples in this room today? <laughs> Hope so. Oh, three. I'll pray for you all later. Can all the believers in this room remember when we first became a disciple of Jesus Christ? And I was thinking of Graham, what you said is, um, do we remember it? Could have been a long, long time ago. But I'm going to talk about that passion that we had originally and how we wanted to introduce people to Jesus. So did anyone introduce you to Jesus? How did you come about to know Jesus? Or did you have a Damascus experience like I did where Jesus just touched me as I walked along Mornington Tire Road? I called out his name. Jesus, if you are real, Show me. And I was instantly transformed. And no one can tell me that Jesus is, is real. He is, Jesus is real. He lives today and he's watching everybody. I'm going to read from John chapter 1, 35 to 51. It's going to come up on the screen. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was, was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathalian and said to him, We have found him of whom... Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathalian said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathalian come toward him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathalian said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So he's watching. Nathalian answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. There's a lot of, a lot of, in, a lot in there. There's a lot of words and I mean, I actually, I actually really enjoyed looking at it and I just saw more and more and more and I'm, I'll try and keep it short. I'm looking at the time, but there was so much in it. In verse 35, John was John the Baptist, not John the Apostle who, 
who wrote about this. John had built up a large ministry. He had many followers. I'll prove that by Matthew chapter 3, 5 to 6. Then Jerusalem, all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptised by him and were in the Jordan confessing their sins. John preached repentance, which we do a lot here. We talk about Jesus and how he died on the cross for every single person here and he took the sins of the world to himself so that we could have life. In verse 36, John was standing with two of his disciples and sees Jesus walk by and testifies, Behold the Lamb of God. And it was spoken just before in verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. So John got a divine revelation from God, just like Kim was talking about in her quiet time there. She's going to tell us one day about that divine revelation. And I talked about Jesus became sin. So he took, he became sin. He took all the sins of the world to himself. But, and so that we could receive forgiveness and come into relationship with God the Father. John called him the Lamb of God as he knew he was coming to replace the Old Testament Mosaic law of sacrificing lambs for the atonement of sins, which was temporary. But Jesus' sacrifice has been done. It's been done once and for all. It's finished. In verse 37, the two disciples heard John speak. Soon as he said, Lamb of God, the two disciples responded to the message of Jesus and followed him. Not John anymore. So being a good witness is drawing people to Jesus, talking about Jesus. And like Jeff spoke, what was just spoken before, we may have had a miracle happen during the week or this year, and it just opens up a door. And uh, when I had Meningi Cockle, and that, well, that was fun because I just milked that for a few months. I could tell people that Jesus healed me. God, God turns everything for good. He can use every bit of it, even terrible things that can happen to people. But he wants you to open up and speak so they can hear. They need to hear the word. And God will speak through people and he'll give revelations and he'll speak through you and people will respond. How that happens is God's business. He knows how it all works. We just need to open up more. In verse 38, Jesus turned, seeing them following and asked, what do you seek? They responded to his voice. They answered, Rabbi, which translated is teacher. They recognised Jesus as a teacher. Jesus is still a teacher today, but he speaks through the Holy Spirit. In verse 39, an invitation is given to them to stay with him that day. Come and see. We need to open our spiritual eyes to see Jesus. Everyone is invited to accept or reject Jesus. The two disciples respond and want to stay with him. Abide in me and I in you. That's in John 15, chapter 15, verse 4. The disciples have been invited into a relationship with him. It is now a two-way relationship, a friendship. And that's what we can have now. We can have that right now. Anything's on our heart, anything we're thinking about, God wants us to come in to a relationship with him. He wants us to talk about anything that's on our heart, anything that's pulling us down. In verse 40, John the Apostle, who wrote the gospel, reinforces the words heard and speak. So then faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The unsaved need need to hear the gospel of Jesus. He is the saviour of the world. So Andrew was one of the disciples that he talked about earlier on. There was two disciples. Andrew was one of them. So what does he do? Once he's following Jesus, he hears that message that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He decides to follow and look for his brother, Simon. He made a bold statement too. He had found the Messiah. The Messiah means anointed one. Jesus had one mission to achieve on earth, and that was to be saviour of the world to save all of us. 
and from our sins and give us everlasting life. In verse 41, Andrew finds his brother, Simon, and brings him to Jesus. Who is Simon? Peter. Peter turns out to be one of the greatest preachers of his time and wrote part of the New Testament. I just want to give you, an, when I read this about Andrew um, for looking for his brother and he found um, Peter, I thought of my sister. Uh, I've got a twin sister and um, we've been, we were brought up in a Catholic faith and we knew a little bit. Um, we sort of did similar things. We sort of went away from God for around about 17, 18, in and out of churches, in and out of faith, just, just still loving God but not really knowing what's going on. And then God touches me seven years ago. So now I've become like full on for God, full on for Jesus. I want to tell everyone like I am now, the passion is inside of me and I have to control it actually a lot of the time because my sister was the other side of this passion because she got me in the early days and I ring her up. Hi, Diana, how are you going? Yep. Oh, do you know about Jesus? And I just talked to her about it. She said, oh, I've heard all that. Yeah, I go to church. Don't worry about it. I said, but you need to know more. He, they need to call out his name. And I just talked to her about it and talked to her about it, little bits and pieces. And then God speaks to me two years ago. He says, I want you to go down to her house in Hampton and I want you to deliver the full gospel message so, because I usually just give bits and pieces, so I go down to my sisters in um, in Hampton. But there is a clue. I knew there was another born again Christian there, so she was there um, with her, and I thought this will be good because where there are two or three gathered in my name, Jesus will be in the midst. And I hadn't met this girl before, Francine, but I think she'll remember me after what I spoke to my sister. And um, she said, oh, that's another story. But so I got in there and get a coffee and very soon, so I need you to sit down. Now, I, I know it's probably people think I'm a bit full on, I can be, but this was out of the ordinary. I thought, I've got to do this. So I sat down on a, at the table and I gave her the full gospel message and all about how Jesus had died on the cross, took the sin of the world, died, you know, was in the grave. He rose from the dead after three days. The whole gospel message, he sits at the right hand of the Father now, interceding, looking for lost souls. He wants all to come into the kingdom of God. No one is exempted. But and then I just said to my this Paul thing, I was going through it and she goes, yeah, yeah. Do you, I said, do you understand? I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to, te- yeah, I do, I do. You know, and I said, well, I need, I give, gave her a Gideon Bible and uh, let her go. And I said, but you need to get to church. No, I don't need to go to church. I said, well, you need to get fed because you know when you want to keep knowing more about Jesus. No, that went on for about a year. And then I just rang her up and then she rings me. I want to go to church. Can you find me a church? Found her a church in Bentley, which is full on for God and absolutely brilliant. She's now been to the Alpha course. She loves Jesus. We text each other about Jesus and praying together and praying. Just, I've got one family member now I'm in heaven with me. I'm confident of that. So that's good. So I'm still looking at the others, but it'll come. They better watch out. <laughs> So there you go. Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> so oh, what, I had, what I was trying, the clue was, which some people are slow burners, as um, Tony told me. That was good wisdom from Tony, from that people can be slow about it. But gee, it increased my faith and my passion for witnessing and searching out people. And I have got a little bit more bolder. And in the work situation, I see things all the time and I just have to use wisdom. When do I speak to them? How do I speak to them? But as Graham said, I've got the Holy Spirit and I trust him and he will guide me and likewise for all of you. Can anyone relate to this testimony about my sister? Has anyone had opportunities to talk to a family member? 
God's going to, I'm going to ask God now to open those doors for our family. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, open the doors for our family. All our sisters, all our brothers, all our children, parents, no one exempted. Open the door, God, make a way in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 42, Jesus looked at Peter and said, as the New Living Translation explains, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. That's which I said before. Once we are saved, we do become a new creation. Like um, Graham said, we have a new identity. The believer's identity is in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And that old self in the car, it needs to get, it needs to be crucified and put down. I can't witness for someone. I can't bring him to Jesus. Just open, yep. And God will give that perfect information to that person, other person. And you'll be the perfect person for that person as well. The following day, Jesus went to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. So Jesus is actively looking for lost souls all the time. But he sends us out all the time to look for them too and speak on behalf of him. Jesus actively went searching for Philip and commanded him to follow him. Philip responded and said, yes, it is our decision. Will we follow Jesus or not? Will we completely surrender our lives to follow his commands, tell people about how he has transformed our lives and has forgiven us for all our sins, that Jesus has given us a hope and a future and that we will live forever with Jesus. We are no longer in fear of sin or death. Verse 44, how does Philip respond? He looks for another disciple, potential disciple. Philip Andrew and Peter were all friends. They were all fishermen from the same region. Are there some of our friends or family members who need to be directed towards Jesus? In verse 45, then Philip found Nathaniel. I will talk about him later. Can anyone relate to this? Can you see the pattern? When we become followers of Jesus, did we get that burning desire in our hearts and want to tell everyone about Jesus? Have we still got that burning passion? Are we worried about lost souls? Is there someone at work that needs to know about Jesus? Is there someone in the coffee shop that you go to every single day and want need to know about Jesus? And it can be in the form of a prayer, Offering prayer, and it's amazing. Like, I've done it with a girl at work, and I'm going to find out next week how she went. But I prayed for her, and uh, her neck, she was complaining and complaining. I said, Do you want me to pray for you? I was a bit apprehensive, and she went, No, oh, she just gave in. And I, said, I just prayed for her and put her, my hand on her. And um, we'll find out next week. But just little things like that. But she hasn't given her heart to the Lord, but I'm, I'm praying for her. I'm, I'm convinced she's going to get saved. If we haven't got that burning desire, we need to ask for an infilling of the Holy Spirit, a refreshing of the Holy Spirit, or even to read the Word, even if you can't be bothered it's just to open it up and read it to you, read it out loud. There's so much power in the Bible. God needs his disciples more than ever to witness for him. The world is in a mess. More and more of our young are not hearing the gospel message spoken and find it difficult to have a chance to respond. All these men went on to do great works after Jesus chose them. They followed him and learnt from him. They made mistakes and they tried to go back to their old lives like the old self in the car, Graham said. But God visited them after he rose from the dead and they were going back to their old lives. But Jesus um, visited them. So if anyone's feeling a bit apathetic about Jesus, you might get a visit next week. I hope so. 
And, um, and that will, you know, like Graham got that vision and I bet it boosted him up and he went, oh, this is good. And, um, and he'll, yeah, we meditate on all those visions and dreams. It's a reason Graham's been given that, not only for himself, but to share it with us. I love visions. I've got a few visions. I've had some visions and they mean a lot. So I hope more people get visions. They were all in the upper room waiting for the promised Holy Spirit from God the Father. Then on the day of Pentecost, they turned the world upside down. 3,000 souls were saved after Peter preached to the Jewish crowd at Jerusalem after being baptised in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go back to Nathaniel. It's hard to say. I'm sorry about that. The invitation is given by Philip. Come and see. Nathaniel is not sure. Note, Philip is now using Jesus' word that we were spoken earlier to two disciples that included Andrew. So we're to become imitators of Christ. He will speak to us through the Holy Spirit and he'll show us how to do what he says. And hear what he says and, and, and just speak it out. Jesus gives Nathalie supernatural knowledge. He is an Israelite in whom no deceit. That is because Jesus knows everything that we're going through, including being under fig trees. Nathalie's response is one of amazement and he gives one of the greatest confessions of faith. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And I love that little comment that Jesus writes in verse 50. Do you believe? So we people can hear the word. It's not up. I mean, I've, I've got really used to it now. I want them saved on the spot. But now I just give the message that God needs them to hear and the Holy Spirit can do something with that. Whatever those words, whatever those acts of kindness, God can do something with it. And, um, and I pray, God, that everyone, that, as it says in the Word, that the harvest is ripe, it's ready. There's people out there every single day getting ready to get saved. So we pray, God, you soften their hearts Open their spiritual ears. If there's anyone here that needs salvation, we pray, God, you open their hearts now that this message has meant something to them. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. The summary. The words spoke and heard were often mentioned in the Scripture. The disciples heard the words spoken, responded and followed Jesus. Jesus would seek his disciples out until they were found and still does today. The disciples imitated Jesus' method. They learnt from the best teacher. Is anyone here sensing Jesus seeking them out today? Can you hear his voice singing of Kim when she said in the quiet times? And and yeah, I thought that is spot on. But God can even go through that, even if there's noise in your head or rackets or lots of people around. He can speak to through people through anything, but quietness is very good. Come and see. I love that. Come and see. That's an invitation for many. That's how I've said to people. Some well, come and come and see. Come to church. Just give it a go. See, see what you can see. See if you can learn something or hear something. So I invite them in all the time. All disciples of Jesus knew who he was and is today. Jesus is the Lamb of God. I love these, all this. Yeah. Jesus is a rabbi, a teacher. He is a teacher. He teaches through the Holy Spirit still. It says in the Word, He brings into remembrance everything. He said to the disciples, He'll bring into remembrance everything I have taught you. But He's going to do more. He's going to do greater works through all of us. He's going to work right through us and to show the unsaved that He's real. He wants people saved, but He's going to use all of us. Once the disciples responded to the call on their lives, they couldn't help but go and find another person and tell people about Jesus. 
They made a few mistakes along the way, but they never gave up and kept focus on Jesus. Once they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, they applied what they'd learnt from the great master. Jesus continues to do this today and teach us through the Holy Spirit and to seek potential disciples. So that is my message today. And uh, I just pray that that once we get that fire back, that passion, and we never lose it. And just, and just if you want to come for prayer and get, you know, encouraged and just, we'll just ask for an infilling of the Holy Spirit or a baptism of the Holy Spirit. But we need the bapt. I'm always talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is essential. So that you got that fire and that passion, that dunamis. And it, it'll come out, the words just target the person. And I see it, they touch their heart and you can see them light up. And, um, and yeah, it's a good feeling, when you, especially when you see someone end up saved and believing in Jesus.